Hey everybody, this is Brennan here with Common Motor. That's common-motor.com on the internet. And today on our Project CT90 or Trail 90, we're gonna upgrade the charging system by swapping out the original uh, rectifier for our new combo voltage regulator rectifier unit for better charging and better running on your bike. Stay tuned. All right, so went ahead and removed uh, the spine cover, uh, the air filter box assembly, and also the, the brush guard, kind of crash guard here on the bike. Our next step is to take off uh, the muffler because the muffler is tied to the gas tank and tied to some other pieces that are all in this area that we have to remove in order to get uh, easy access to it. So I'm gonna show you to take off the muffler because there's a few tricks to it. We have two bolts here that hold the, the muffler, an actual the header pipe to the cylinder head. We have a bolt here hiding in the bottom that holds the muffler to a stud on the gas tank. And we have a bolt back here on the, uh, where the shock mounts. So all those have to come off for us to take the muffler off. I'm gonna start with uh, this rear one here and then we'll take off these two and then we'll take off the one in the middle last. The two nuts that hold the, uh, the header pipe to the cylinder head tend to be very, very rusty sometimes. Uh, so make sure you use some penetrating oil on them or and a wire brush to get off that heavy rust uh, because they can break. They can also back the stud out of the head. It might happen, but uh, take your time, be patient with them. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of penetrating oil on them right now. They come apart. What do you know, these came right off. Who knew? Now that the muffler's off, we have access to a few things on uh, the right side of the bike. Most importantly, uh, we're gonna be getting in behind the battery box here and getting inside the frame uh, to access the things we need to get to. Also, we can access the, the two bolts on this side that hold the fuel tank on place. Uh, this is a weird special bolt stud here that holds the muffler. And there's supposed to be one there, but on our project bike, uh, it is missing. So someone has been here before. Uh, there's also two of those on the opposite side that we went ahead and removed a little bit earlier. Let's take this off. Swing the top up and slide out. There it is. We have this tang here that fits into the slot here on the frame. Okay, uh, I'm gonna take the battery out now. I'm gonna go ahead and unhook it. I think this battery is actually, it's a pretty new battery in here. And with the Trail 90 batteries here, they always have this kind of split wire set up with one of them has a fuse. That's, that's your main fuse there on the Trail 90. Inside of there. Pull those off. Take this off. I'll take this bracket off this bowl here. Not all bikes have this bracket here. This is for a, a flasher relay that clearly is, is missing. Uh, don't be surprised if your earlier bike does not have a little bracket there. Um, I'm gonna take off this piece of the, the battery box here. It just has a cotter pin in it because we want to clean it up. Uh, you don't have to take it off, but uh, in this case, I want to just for, for cleaning and also so it's easy for you guys to see with the camera. I'll just take that off of there. Let's talk a little bit about the charging system on the CT90 or Trail 90. It is a six volt permanent magnet, single phase charging system. The way this system works is that it just throws a lot of voltage at the battery and the battery is supposed to kind of absorb it and that's how it works. So really it doesn't have a, uh, uh, a cap on it to charge a voltage regulation cap on it. It's just as like boom, 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 boom power. Uh, that can be problematic because you can overcharge a battery um, and cause the battery to cook and other parts to cook. So we're gonna replace that unit with our updated solid state rectifier and voltage regulator combo. And that way we can at least cap uh, the maximum voltage going to a battery at a given time. And it's a lot more efficient system than the old, uh, the old ones that are in there, which are actually very failure prone. 
now that we've gotten all the other components off the bike, we can actually access uh, the factory rectifier on our Trail 90 project. It's tucked way up inside of the housing here. It's this little piece with uh, the fins on it, a little cube fin deal there. And uh, in order to get it out, it's a lot easier to move the gas tank out of the way, although you don't have to. We've gone ahead and done it to make it easier so we can access both sides of it. All right, here's our, our rectifier here. We have plastic four pin connector, undo that. And then push those wires out of the way so you guys can see what's going on a little better. And then I have to go to the other side and undo a nut here so we can actually pull the piece off real quick here. We've removed the rectifier from our Trail 90 and this is what I call the later style rectifier. It's kind of this aluminum cube with fins, um, with a single bolt going through it. Uh, keep some of this hardware, we can use it again, installing the new unit. And this one happened to have a, a female connector plug on it. And uh, that's just how that was set up. So something to be mindful of is Honda used a lot of different kind of connector variants or combos over the years. Also, you might run into the fact that some other people have repaired your bike in the past and done all kinds of crazy hillbilly wiring or connections in there. So don't be surprised if you have to clip some uh, connectors off and add some new connectors onto the bike. Uh, case in point, here is a rectifier out of a very, very early uh, Trail 90. As I said, this is the orange, called the orange fins. It's on this, I call V bracket right here, but actually it faces up and it would actually still mount into the same spot in the, uh, the frame here um, as if the bike was old. This is super, super early because it happens to have just the three wires on it. It doesn't have the green ground wire. Later ones you'll see it attached to the center bolt. It doesn't matter. Uh, just to show you, there is a lot of different versions of parts that are used. You don't know what you might run into in your bike. Here's our new unit we're gonna replace it with. It's a rectifier and voltage regulator. Uh, in this case, we happen to have a, a male connector on the end. I'm gonna swap it out for a female connector so I can tie into the existing harness. Good news is, regardless of what setup you have, uh, our kit comes with all the hardware to make the swap easy or to put a new connector on, depending on what you find. A uh, Couple other points here. Uh, this black wire is our feedback wire for the voltage regulator. This was never in the system originally. We're gonna tap this into a six volt positive wire that's in the center of the harness. So our voltage regulator has a feedback signal to know where to regulate the voltage at. Uh, final note is you know, this, this unit is gonna work on all the different Hondas with the six volt single phase permanent magnet, magnet charging system. So this means S90s, C90s, CL90s, also bikes like the CB and CL100s and CL, CB and CL125s, SLs, etc. cetera. Uh, all of them are gonna have slightly different wiring connectors on the end, but it still works in the same manner. Just make sure you mount it up correctly, match your wire colors, and you should be good. terminals are, are crimped on um, before I actually just start putting them into the, the plastic connector I want to make sure I put them in the right orientation in regards to our existing connector so we know we, we plug in like that so our top one be our, our top side here is gonna be our red uh, red white and then our green right next to it so we'll do those two first there green right next to it there our yellow is underneath the red one and the pink is under the green one so yellow under the red that and pink under the green 
let's get ready to install the new uh, combo reg rec unit. It's gonna install facing this direction with the wires towards the front of the bike. And we're only gonna utilize the bottom mounting hole for this. There's no need to use the top hole. Uh, we'll show you in a second why we're not gonna use it. Uh, but we will be using our existing holes in the frame. I'm using this hole right here. Um, that's our other hole. That would have been for the V bracket back in the day. If you had, if you happen to have an earlier bike with a V bracket, our original unit off this bike was on this one, but we're going to go to this one now. It'll be super easy. The bolt that comes with it, it's an M, M6 by 14. And I'm just going to get it through the, through the hole there kind of in place, kind of let it sit right there. Uh, I'm gonna use the nut and washer that came off our original unit again, because why not, they're still good. And we're gonna bolt it to the other side, real easy. So let me hop around the other side of the bike here. You can see why I wanted to have the tank off the bike or tank out of the way, because it makes this a lot easier to do. Just trying to hold it in place enough to get the bolt started. Grab the open end here on the back side. Kind of wedge it there. Come in from the front side here. Got my 10 mil on an extension. So I can just snake that. Just right on there like that. I want to just kind of keep it kind of facing fairly, fairly vertical there. Just snug it on down. That looks good. It's nice and flat against the inside of the, the cover here. It's not going anywhere. So that's it. And we get to use the existing holes and some of the existing hardware. Uh, for those of you who might be wondering, hey, well, you know, we have the second hole here. Can we, uh, can we drill the second hole? I don't advise it because the air filter comes up against here and sits flat against the face here. And so if you put a, a nut and a bolt through there, it's gonna cause the air filter to wanna push out if you're running the factory air box. So no need to do that. And also you might be saying, well, hey, you got that other hole here that you took the, the original unit out of. If you look closely, you'll see that there's a step in the frame here, how it steps up. You could rotate the rectifier and try to mount it into that hole, but then you have to, have to shim it outwards with some washers and some nuts. So you clear that and also you're gonna have to enlarge the holes on the rectifier unit. So they line up because they're pretty close, but they're not 100%. It's another way of doing it. I think this is probably the easiest way to do it with all the ways we've been experimenting. So again, one bolt's gonna be good enough. I also like this because it positions the wires facing towards the front of the bike into the space. And we can kind of tuck them up out of the way versus having more stuff on the bottom side of the box uh, for connecting all the pieces. So um, I think in my, my opinion, this is probably the best way to get them out. All right. so. Connecting up the, the rectifier to our, our plastic plug is going to be pretty obvious. We'll do that in a second. Let's talk about hooking up our, our black wire, our feedback wire to the system. Uh, if I'm looking at my harness here, I have this, uh, this black wire here. You see how it has this red, in this case it happens to have a red uh, stripe on it. They, don't, they won't necessarily have a red stripe, but it's coming out of the main harness here. Uh, it's plugged into, this would be the flash relay, uh, brake light switch here. And I'm just gonna tap my, my, posi, my posi tap into this wire here. I guess you could tap into either one of these here, but I'll go ahead and tap into this one here because I know it's a solid part of the frame or solid part of the harness for a feedback. And so these posi taps are really, really cool. We're gonna install this side first where we have a little piece with a point on it. And this little kind of slotted piece that goes on the wire first. Let's do that. Let's get this on the wire. That seems a little bit cumbersome, guys. All right, just like that, right there. All right, now we're gonna take this piece and we literally just thread it on. And a little point's gonna poke a hole in the wire. And that's how it's gonna make the connection. And all you have to do is get it hand tight like that. That's good there. We'll take off that side. Here's our feedback wire for the voltage regulator. Slide that on there. 
we haven't used these Posi products before, they're fantastic because they're high quality. You can take them apart, put them together. The thread started on that. I'm pushing on the wire. Like I'm bringing it up, pushing on the wire. Make sure it stays seated the whole time. Finger tight and then give it a tug. It's not going anywhere. So that's, now we're tapped in to get feedback to the, uh, the voltage regulator. Got a little bit of my dielectric grease here. I'm gonna go ahead and put some on my terminals since these things tend to get neglected. Never touched for decades upon decades. Installed. And then we can tuck these guys kind of further up towards the front inside the, you know, the box here in the frame. We've got our Trail 90 reassembled, all the bits and pieces back on, and hopefully we should be good with the charging system. Now the regulator, well I should say the original bike's rectifier is a failure prone part of the charging system and the bike never had a voltage regulator to begin with because of the primitive nature of the system architecture. But with our new unit, we're gonna get better charging and more stable voltage going to the battery than the bike's ever had. Uh, you can see how much we had to remove from the bike in order to access and make the upgrade. And of course you have to also pay mind to what kind of connectors am I dealing with in my harness and make the changes as necessary. But it's probably the number one electrical upgrade you're gonna be able to do to the bike that's gonna pay off in the big picture and make your bike run stable, be happy, start easy. All those good things we want our bike to do, especially with a very simple six volt charging system. As always, this is Brendan with Common Motor. It's common-motor.com on the internet. Thanks for watching. Make sure you follow us on social media. That's Instagram and Facebook. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our newsletter via our website and of course subscribe to this youtube channel down below ring the bell for notifications and we'll see you next time